Alléluia. Alléluia. Amen. Uh, we are thankful for the love that God has expressed to all of us. Uh, the man in which God has shown his love for us is when he allowed his only son uh, to be crucified on our behalf and to carry all our sins, sicknesses, and all these negative things that we may think about. And that's how God expressed his genuine love for all of us. And we thank him for that. May we give the Lord a wonderful hand of praise for our worship leaders in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, we, are, we are going to pray and the song that they have sung Now we have a tendency of singing songs and not attach meaning to them. Even if the songs gives a meaning, we don't necessarily pay attention to it. The same as you talking to someone else and you're having a wonderful conversation and someone gives you information. You are looking at the person, but your mind is far away. So you don't hear what the person is saying. So it is possible that we may all be singing that he's doing only the good things. Once we go through our teaching, maybe it will also highlight what humanity is. Why mudimo armo bibiling? God is not a man that he may lie or he should lie. It's because there's a difference between you and God. So it's possible from a human point of view that you can sing the song and say, Udi ratedi boti fela kispegi so. Udi ratedi boti fela. Mara hausu no tu amo obo mu blame ka something says it's in boti. So it set up a, 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 a platform for us to pray. The Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift in the book of James. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above. Amen, Bazalwan. God is good. Aha, it's a religious response. Is he good all the time? Do we attach that goodness to him all the time? Because if we don't, and you are saying, or you are just uttering, it is an, a religious utterance. A religious utterance is when you make statement you don't even pay attention to. You are the one who are making that statement, but you're not paying attention to. It's like when you pray, oh God, you are the provider, whatever, whatever meaning, whichever way you pray, you express your, your needs to him. And then immediately after you have prayed, and you go out and you speak against your prayer. You prayed. You go out there and you begin to go up and down trying to solve your problems. But you went into the presence of God and did what? Hey, Mr. S. And cast your problems to him. Cast your burdens to him. And he cares for you. That's what the Bible says. But immediately you left his presence. Then you start again. Complaining about all the problems that are on this earth and then begin to blame him. But the Bible continues saying, every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above. It comes from God. It comes from God who, according to that scripture, in him there is no variableness. In him there is no variableness. It means with God, God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen, Bazalwan. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 says God changes not It means if God is good Then he must be good all the time God is good It means if God is good He must be good all the time Why? He's the same yesterday Hebrew says Today and forever If there is anything that happens in a person's life And is not good we should be knowing from the book of John chapter 10, 10 that the thief has shown up because the Bible says the thief shows up to do what? To kill, to destroy, and to steal. Amen, Bazalwan. So don't allow the thief to steal your family. Don't allow the thief to steal your job. Don't allow the, the thief to steal your joy. Amen, Bazalwan. Don't allow the thief to steal your health. In Jesus' name. 
Oh, I know that we come from cultural churches where they pray for you, they lay hands on you, and you become a baby forever because you always expect someone to feed you. You want to be spoon, uh, uh, spoon fed. You want to be spoon fed. But we are challenging all of us to grow so that we are no longer spoon fed. We can be able to stand on our two feet. What is our prayer today? Our prayer item is, Lord, we want to come before you and repent. We have blamed you for COVID-19 and it absolutely has nothing to do with you. We have blamed you for our beloved who passed on. Much as we knew they are born again, the children of God, you became so miserable that you forgot that this is where we are all going. And you said, God, why did you take her or him? If you knew that it is the journey that you are traveling, you are not even supposed to point a finger at God. Oh, this week, your, your health was impacted negatively. And you begin to say, but Lord, if, if, I'm, a, if I'm a Christian, why am I so sick? And why do you allow this sickness to come upon me as if it is God's doing? You have forgotten that the Bible says Jesus Christ was manifested what, in order to do what? To destroy the works of the devil. The book of 1 John says so. So when we pray, we come before God and say, Lord, we have blamed, blamed you for all the things that are done by either Satan or us or the people. If South Africa is not prospering, it's not, that, it, it's not God's uh, problems. It is not God who causes it not to, to prosper. Maybe it's your politicians, the one you voted for. And you will never go back and say, no, man, this is this party. This is this particular individual. You will go back and point a finger at who you call good God. So we repent because we have blamed God for things that absolutely have nothing to do with him. And you became so resentful that you even separated from him. You pray no more. That people are no longer talking to God. You no longer go to God. Now your spirituality has fallen. You have died spiritually. Why? Because the Bible says you will only grow when you feed on the milk which is the word of God. Because it is the word of God that we grow by according to the book of 1 Peter. Amen, Bazalwan. Now if you don't take that responsibility, how do you expect yourself to grow? And when you are falling, you begin to point the finger again at the good God. Now, I want us to approach God and say, Lord, here we are. We present ourselves before you and we lay our hearts before you. And we're also talking through to the ones who are on YouTube. As Mama has said that soon we will be on Facebook. We thought that today we will be on Facebook, but we believe soon we'll be on Facebook. But even you at home, wherever you are at work, when you make this prayer, please don't make a religious prayer. Just pray and say, Lord, here am I. I'm presenting myself before you. Lord, I might have blamed you for things that has absolutely nothing to do with you. But from henceforth, I, have, I, I, I am going to make sure that I point my fingers at the right culprit. Satan. And from there, let's praise him for his goodness. You know why? But we are amongst those who God saw it fit for us to be alive this morning. And because we are alive, let's celebrate him and say, Lord, thank you. I may not be having everything I want, but one thing that I have is the life. And because you have given me life, whether I have a job or I don't have a job, whether I'm sick or I'm not sick, I know there is still something big you want to do through me. I believe there is still something big you want to do through my family. I believe there is still something great you want to do through me and my friends, me and my family members. Can we all express our thanksgiving to God and pray, Father, here we are standing before you in repentance, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Lord, I repent because from time to time when I look at the outcome of life, sometimes I've been the one who caused it, Lord. I point the finger at you and say, Lord, but why are things are happening this way? As if you are responsible. You made the heavens and earth and gave the earth to us so that we should be responsible for it. Lord God, you presented us with the word and the word has got everything, everything, Lord God, that has to make it possible for us to make it in Jesus' name. 
in Jesus name amen Barcelona. so father we come before you and say we might have pointed fingers your direction not necessarily because you are the one responsible in most cases we find ourselves responsible for it now we come before you I come before you Lord God and repent and say Lord give me the strength and the ability to face the battles that are before me to allow you to fight my battles and to be humble enough to accept where I am wrong Lord God and allow you Father God to take over and to guide in Jesus mighty name Koya ba brozwe zeke tele brozenda la muna kata riba brozwende le remundo roshwi ribi kora la brozwara Reba brozwende le remundo roshwi ribi kora la brozwara Reba brozwende le remundo roshwi ribi kora la brozwa Rima brozwende le rebo brozwende le remundo roshwi ra Oh father koya ba brozwende le remundo roshwi ribi kora la brozwara Oh Lord, we bless you. Lord God, I come before you, Lord God, to express my thanksgiving. Lord God, some of my colleagues are already with you, Father. But you saw it fit for me to still be around. And Lord God, I want to thank you for the faith and the trust, Lord God, that you have on all of us who are here, who are alive. I want to thank you, Lord God, for all the sons of Manhora, wherever they might be, Father God. I thank you for your, their love for you, Lord God. I thank you for their commitment and loyalty to you, O God. I thank you for my family. I thank you for my wife, O God. I thank you for Kito Kutlisiso and Mabu Tale, O Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I thank you, Lord God, for giving me, Lord God, three grandchildren, Father. I bless you and I honor you. Buhulu Mohau, Lord God, Le Abongwe, O Father. I thank you for trusting us, Lord God, with such a responsibility. I thank you, Lord God, for trusting us, Lord God, with the responsibility of leading a church, O God. In Jesus' name, I worship you. I praise you, I bless you, I honor you, and I magnify you in Jesus' name. Koya ba brozwe zende le remundo roshwira. Riba brozwe zende le remundo roshwiri biukora la brozwara. Nderebe bo brozwe zende le remundo roshwiri biukora la brozwa. Nderebe bo brozwe zese ketele bo 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 kotora la brozwe. Oh, Father, riba ba brozwe zende le remundo roshwiri biukora. Nderebe bo brozwende le remundo roshwi ribi kora la brozwara Nderebe bo brozwende le remundo roshwi ribi kora la brozwara Raba bo Rima mo roje kete la brozwara Riba brozwende le remundo roshwi ribi koya you are worthy of all our praises, O God. You are worthy of our honor, Lord God. We glorify you this morning. We magnify you, Father. We adore you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. We magnify you and we glorify you in the precious mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to ask all of us to do our procedure manual and then I'll count one, two, three, and we do our procedure manual. I would like to also uh, express again my gratitude for all the people who are on the platform. Uh, you who are on YouTube, you are a church on the YouTube. So when I preach and say amen, glory, hallelujah, respond. Let the people who are with you on the YouTube know that you are also there. Say, hey, but show some life. God bless you wherever you are in Jesus' name. Don't sit there like a dead meat and you're looking at the screen like you are watching your TV. You are, you are a part of what we are here. We are doing here. You are part of this wonderful church that is here this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Can we all say amen? You see, I'm talking to you and it seems like you're not listening. You're not punching amen on that platform. You must punch it on that. Even if you are three, even if you are 100, punch so that we know you are there in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want us to do our, our procedure manual. I'll count to one, two, three. And then uh, I don't see them reflecting it there. For sure, they'll get organized as time progresses for those who are here for the first time. One, two, three. This book of the law shall not depart from my mouth, but I shall meditate in it day and night, that I may observe to do 
according to all that is written in it. For then I will make my way prosperous, and then I will have good success. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a wonderful hand of praise and take up your chair in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I thought that the young man who was there was going to make the service a little bit spicy, you know, and usher music at the background. But it's fine. Maybe one day, maybe next week, they will usher us with this philosophy. As a chapel of Fatih Rante Ribina, the Lebonacare, the Mamezi Tuso Motau, Amen Bazalwan. So, hallelujah. You see, I want us to briefly also, as we continue with the subject, to focus on what happens between your journey from the womb. For sure you will remember that this one was teaching on the journey of life or life's journey. Uh, when he spoke about the, the GPS, I mean Bazalwan. So for sure you, 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 you will understand that all this teaching connects one way or the other. So, so, so remember that teaching also as I teach. But I want us to look at the journey from the womb to the tomb. From Kopu Pelong. Uh, if you made it to be out of the womb. From the womb to the tomb. How many years are you going to live from the womb to the tomb? Who determines the number of years you are going to live? That is why, as I'm standing before you, I am in a protest against Satan. Because as a Satan, you will never touch what is mine. You see, when you are a citizen in South Africa, you're supposed to know human rights. So that anybody who violates your human rights, you can begin to challenge the person. You can challenge the person by opening a case and make sure that that person receives what he is due or she is due. The punishment, that, that, that is good for the person. That's only when you know your rights. But if you don't know your rights, somebody may violate you and you may just be okay. They may violate you at work and you don't know labor laws. And you don't know labor laws, you go and complain when you are actually wrong. And those who are in human resource, they bring their law. And when they bring their law, you begin to say, this government, this country, this world exercise injustice. No, it doesn't exercise injustice. You don't know your rights. Somebody say amen or something. Because today Christians don't even know their rights. That is why Satan is playing games with you. He's tossing you to and fro. You don't know whether you're born again or not born again. You don't know your rights. You don't know whether sickness is okay or not okay. You don't even know how to deal with it. What are the terms of your employment? Did you ever read what is the actual terms of your employment? Or you are just joining the group that protests and you don't know why. Maybe your contract is far different from the rest of them. Maybe you should behave differently from the rest of them. You know what is the problem? Many years ago, before the, 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 this, this regime, we used to say, if a white man wants to hide anything from a black man, must jot it on the paper, must write it down, because blacks don't want to read. And don't, don't, don't waste your time lecturing them and telling them what the Constitution says. No, give them the Constitution. They will take the Constitution and place it somewhere in the wardrobe and never read it. And because they never read it, they don't know what is their rights. And anybody comes in and rob you of your own things. Sometimes we celebrate people and we bow down before people that are supposed to celebrate us and bow down before us. Like a lot of people who worship angels. They bow down to angels because they don't know that angels are ministering spirit. A spirit sent to serve us. I am 
above the angels because the angels are our servants. We give command to, to angels. We tell them, I am going. Do your job. Protect me. Surround me. Make sure that nobody will touch me. Amen, Bazalwan. But if you don't know your rights, you travel from the womb to the tomb, frustrated, defeated, failing all the way. Sick and torn apart. Robbed all the way. Robbed by Satan. Robbed by your friends. Robbed by members of your family. Literally robbed by everybody. Because you don't know your rights. You don't even know your rights in as far as relationship are concerned. And you have been abused. You have been cursed. You have been tormented. And you are quiet in your little corner. You don't even know what is the next step when you are abused. Why? Because you don't know your rights. So we need to know from the womb to the tomb. How do we spend that time? What is it that is expected from us? But nevertheless, let us go to the few scriptures that we read last week and added with some few, and from there we'll conclude. Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 4 to 5. It goes this way. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Jeremiah, saying, So I want to learn to was not stagnating somewhere in a little corner. You do see fair. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Jeremiah, saying, Before I formed you, uh, before I formed you, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Because so to Billy, who ate a mopu pillow, who saw can mopu pillow, he let a I'll talk about it a few minutes from henceforth. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified, I sanctified you. And the, in the NIV, it says, I set you apart. Even before you got into the womb, before you even come to the planet Earth, sorry, even before you came to the planet Earth, Mudimu sanctified you, has set you apart. When you were born, you were born already special. So no one should make you better. No one should make you feel better. You came already on the planet Earth. Good, perfect, and better. No one, no one had the right to approve and to, to, and to disapprove you. Because you come already having passed through a quality control. Quality check. Where God checked you and said, you are qualified now to go on earth to the earth and begin your work. Then he released you from the womb. So you came here having everything it takes for you to become a champion. So don't allow anybody to make you feel sorry for yourself. Don't allow anybody to make you undermine yourself. Don't allow anybody to make you look down at yourself. You are a champion. You are born a victor. You are born winning already. You are born unique. How funny now, bo. Amen, Bazalwan. Before you were born, you were sanctified or set apart. Ordained or appointed. I ordained and appointed you a prophet to the nation. Did you know that you are not going to get to know your job description from a company that is going to employ you? You are already born with a job description. <laughs> you, you already are born with a job description. Amen, Bazalwan. Mudimu did not just throw us solo to this planet Earth without a job description. You already are born because he appointed you and, and ordained you, inaugurated you for a service for what you will be doing when you are here on Earth. If I'm a track driver, it's because even when I was born, God already knew that when you are going to be a track driver. 
You are going to make sure that you move my goods from one country to another country. You, you, you already are given the responsibility of a pilot. You are going to be taking people from one country to another so that they trade amongst themselves, so that the work that I've sent all as individual is done and is done well. So those who do not know, what are they here for? You find them fighting for what is not theirs because they are unaware of their own job description. Baru opisa toho. Motolo opisa toho komu sebeti. Oto kira lo kumuto was not supposed to even be there. Umisita job description ya kaka asante na luko pupelo nyama mache. Because na twenty rahato mo pupelo nyama mache. Abato mo pupelo nyama mache. Asante na toro job description ya kaka like this. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. I can't remember how many of you know uh, this tunnel yeah, the Huguenot uh, tunnel. The Huguenot tunnel. When you go to Cape Town, there is a tunnel that you are going to go through it and go to the other side. Let's read this verse. We, it says, it says, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. We are God's workmanship. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works. Amen, Bazaar Mudimu did not create you for bad works. So God is not expecting you to involve yourself in criminal acts. Amen, Bazaar He wants you to do your business honestly, fairly, and, and justly. Amen. I know when I talk like this, I'll get a few amens because you robbed your way to the promotion. No, Mudimu is not out to judge you. The Bible says God doesn't condemn us according to our what? According to our sins. Mudimu is not out there with a knobkiri trying to find the wrongs in you. But God says, if you get the truth of the word, align yourself with the truth. Don't, don't condemn yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Because why? When you were in the womb, already God has ordained you, has anointed you. Already God has inaugurated you. You know, people are still waiting for pastors to call them and anoint them and call them, call them in, in ministry. They are, they are lost. Because before you can become a pastor and be called for pastorate, if one day I have to let go of this work and I call Sipo and Tatemuzila or any other person, I say, you take over this work. He was actually ordained even before he took over the job. For your information, not before I became a pastor at Grace Bible Church, the Lord already told me in my heart, I told no one. I never even battled and fought to be a pastor. No, I kept quiet. I, I kept that information away from even a close friend of mine that I worked with, Muruti Joseph Cha. No, I kept quiet. And God worked his own way. If God is God who has called us, he will be able to pinpoint you in the midst of multitude of people and position you accordingly. You don't have to fight, kill, divide the church simply because you've got the ambition. Allow God to do his mighty work. Can somebody say amen? Because we are born already with a job description. Amen. How is is your job description? Amen, Bazaran. How a house executive is a job description? Amen, Bazaran. Oscar, why me nanga nanga pangel exchange in M seven zero? No, when na ulonga pangel, maunge na mausendle no M seven zero. Because people think calling is only when you standing here and approaching. That is why some of the people who God has called to, 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 to go out and make big business and succeed in business so that the ministry can be funded, so that other poor people can be assisted. They consume all that for their own selfish desires and appetite. Because they thought the only way you are called is when you are preaching. Come on! If calling is for preachers only, then all of you are supposed not to participate in whichever way. 
You don't have to give anything to the church. You don't have to be an usher. You don't have to be a counselor. You don't have to be all this. Let the pastor be everything that has all to do with ministry. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk therein. That doesn't spoke about the GPS, the global positioning system. And we like Fali Bizo, I tell us, I'm not going to be a GPS. And I get the global positioning system. Amen, Bazalwan. I give you a tunnel. When I spoke about the, the Zugonot tunnel, when you get into the tunnel, I want you to understand this thing this way. Maybe let me read this scripture, then I'll give that clarity and that explanation. Psalms 139, verse 13 to 14 and 16. Psalms 139, verse 13, 14 to 16. It goes this way. You, God, formed my inward parts. Ah, Jesus. You, God, formed my inward parts. Psalms 139. You, God, formed my inward part. There was something I wanted to show you there, but Ban Zabala said, let's leave it. You, God, formed my inward part. And then you covered me in my mother's womb. Let me tell you, God's protection began when you were still in the womb. And today you are afraid. Afraid of, of pand the pandemic. Afraid of, of the pestilences. Afraid of all kinds of sicknesses and accidents. Because you have forgotten that God had protected you whilst you were still in the womb. He provided covering for you. Can somebody say amen? amen? I say, can somebody say amen? amen? Now look at what God has done. This is brilliant. I get where we have read this same. You have formed my inward parts. When God made you, he made you and also installed in you a software, an application. That has to make sure that everything that God has formed in you will function nicely, with no stress, excellently, and perfectly. So all of you, say to yourself, I'm a perfect being. Now when we look at this person, we see different parts of the body. We see different parts of the body. We see even this, this structure here is different parts of the body. Here we have the lungs, we have the heart, we have the, 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 uh, the, the what is this? All of them, they are all here. So what happened? God, before he made you in the womb, he worked like an architect or an engineer. He drafted you first. He had to drone you first. I'm in Barcelona. And he knew where the heart should be. He knew where the liver should be. He knew where the lungs should be. He knew where the brains ought to be. He knew where the nervous, nervous system should be as a, as a software. He knew the software that has to deal with the digestion. And, and then the, the, software, the software that has to deal with assimilation of necessary food in your, in your system. He also knew how to dispose what is needed. That is why you go to the toilet because if after God, had, after your system had taken everything that it needs, it disposes what is no longer necessary. So God, before He formed you, I get when we read the Bible in Genesis chapter one twenty six and twenty seven, God says, "Let us make men in our image and in our likeness." In our image and they must be like us like us is a software that god had to put in you or an application that had to make you function well on earth so that all the parts that god has placed in your system can be able to operate without any hindrance when you are sick is when one of those parts are not functioning well 
We've got what we call immune system. Immune system is a software or an application that has to fight against any attack to your body. Amen, Basalwan. So when you rush for vaccine, you rushing for vaccine already in your system. You have a vaccine. God made you and installed in you a vaccine. Oh, those are the inward part. So when you take a vaccine, you are like people who take what I call supplements. Mamzololo, write the supplements. Those who, who take supplements, when you take supplements, it's because you've got what God already has installed in you and you are just boosting it. You don't take vaccine as if vaccine is, must substitute what your body is designed to do. Your body already can fight against everything that attacks it. Even if you can be stepped, your body, I don't know whether it's enzymes, your body has got the, 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 the tools to be able to make sure that it closes that scar. Amen, Basalwan. Now, all that God planned before he can do it. That is why I say, if you are not planning your future, you must know that your future is going to harass you. Because God, God planted the kind of person that he must bring on the planet Earth. You are not a steadyman. You are not a social worker. Because you determined to become one. That is why even people who are in their post, they go away from their post because they envy what is not theirs. Some, instead of enhancing what they are doing, they shift away from what they are doing. Amen, Basalwan. When Kito was studying law, he, he finished the first course, the first degree. And then he said, no, I'm going to do social science. I wanted to know, why are you going to do social science? Why do you want to be a social worker? Because you'll get the job quick. I said, in that case, I'm not going to fund you. Somebody said, ah, I'm fundis. I said to her, when I asked you, even before you were in grade 12, what are your pursuits? What is it that you wanted to be? You said to me, you wanted to be a lawyer. She will remember that I went to see the teachers who, had, who used to engage her with drama at a late conclusion. What does drama has to do with my child who wants to be a lawyer? And the teacher had to sit me down and explain to me why drama, why is it necessary? Because lawyers, somebody shouted with me, lawyers are actors. I'm telling you, you see them there at court, Mr. Eswene, well, you deal with them always. <laughs> As a human resource, you are also an actor. I'm in Basel 1. Here is one of the actors right in front of you. Lawyers are actors. They will speak lies like it is truth. And the expression will convince you. If you don't know the constitution, if you don't know the law, but that's how I got to I said, hey, baby, now I'm committed to what you told me I should engage in and invest in. And she went to try her level best to get bursaries for what's a social science, social work, and it never worked. I said, to her, if you want me to continue funding you, you go back to law. And she went back to law, and I did not have the budget for her because she said that the following year she will be doing social science. Now, when she went to do, uh, to conclude, to complete law, she knew that she would have to do a lot of sacrifices because she was not in my budget. Amen! The reason was, I said to her, if you want to do social science, do after you have completed your law. 
complete your law degree and from there enhance what you are doing by adding another course that is relevant to what you are studying it is within what you are studying and you are enhancing it that's what we call supplement I remember that one so when you take these other things the really represent the supplement you are boosting already that which is in you so I give a kilo kira a tap because the sabo hoso eriko ble le otlo hoso. Learn to vaccine. Can I think vaccine is going to make you an eternal being? You're going to die. Nobody's going to live forever. Why are you so deceived and fearful of what is inevitable? O ka se tsabeng tshotlwetsa galang. Ere e ina ge ere o nkutlisa botlhoko re e ina. Bona ba zalwane I'm going to live up until I'm 104 and that will be my 40th year. Life will begin at that time. Even if I can live up until I'm, I'm 120, I'm still going to do what? I'm still going to die. Why? Because nobody's going to live forever. Now, let me explain. So God formed my inward parts and then you covered, you covered me in my mother's womb. You covered me. You protected me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And that my soul knows very well. He says, I have no doubt you have done the best when you made me and you ushered me out of the womb. You made me the best. Don't allow anybody to, 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 to prescribe beauty to you. A handsome man is a tall man. No, a handsome man is a short man with crooked, crooked legs. Is it crooked legs? Oh, I'm Mike. How will you do How handsome? No, get handsome. I'm in Barcelona. I'm super camuno and or. Can you hold it out to Chaco? Did it take the tent to lay out? Oh, handsome. I'm in Barcelona. Did it take a hot? Ire, can you hold it out to Chaco? Can you cut one of our Chaco? Can it take the tent to lay? Oh, handsome. Amen, Barcelona. Why am I handsome? Because after God has made me, has formed me, he thought of me before he can start working. He was using a blueprint to make me. He was using a pattern to make me. The same way your clothing, it was done from a pattern. He made a pattern and he looked at me and said, this is the best. So David says, you have made me wonderful. And for those who do not know, uh, the, 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 the height that David D, Lemurana Jesu, the Leah Paul, they were just as short as I am. Amen, told people. 16, your eyes saw, listen to this one, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And even before my substance were made, even before you made me, you saw me. So you are not an accident. You are God's intent. He knew what he was doing. And in your book, they were all written. The days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. Yet there were none of them. Could have already God knew how long we are going to live. I spoke about it last, last week and I was excited about it. For now, nobody will tell me when to die. No experts will tell me when to die. No doctors will tell me when to die. But I was alone. I'm not going to die because the doctors say you are dying now. No, I'm going to live. As long as God is not declaring me dead, I will remain alive. Will I be a fool when I live my life and be careless? No, I'll be very wise. Amen, Basal 1. Job chapter 8, I mean Job, Job chapter 10, 8 and 16. I'm trying to, 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 to fly a little bit faster. Job chapter 10, verse 8 
18 to 19. Job chapter 10, verse 8, then 18 to 19. It goes this way. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. An intricate unity, yet you who did destroy me. Verse 18. Why then have you brought me out of the womb? Oh, that you have perished, that you have perished, and no eyes have seen me. 19. I would have, I would have been as though I had not been. I would have been carried from the womb to the tomb or to the grave. And Psalms chapter 10, Psalms chapter 100, Psalm chapter 100, verse 3 says, Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us and not ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture or the sheep of His resource. Remoshapi, wadi jotachache. Remeshapi, ya di promises samudim. Remeshapi, ya everything ends in kimudim. Amen, Basalwan. Now let me go back to the Huguenot uh, tunnel. Now here's God making you. We take this pulpit as the Huguenot tunnel. Amen, Basalwan. This pulpit is the Huguenot tunnel. And then moi felanting. Kimo, kimo Hugo not eternally fell And then here is God standing outside the pulpit. So this side of the pulpit, that's where God is standing. And after this side of the pulpit, there is something else. Now let's start with this side. When you come and you reach the pulpit, you are moving from where God is into another territory. The same way as you drive your car or in a text, whatever it is, and you go through the Huguenot tunnel because you're going to the Western Cape. Now, when you get in the tunnel, you are going to get out of the tunnel the other side. Amen, Bazaran. So, where God is standing is eternity. Amen, Bazaran. There's no time there. So, the tunnel, it's time. It's when people operate within time. So God decides of what he's going to create, which is you, Mr. S. And after decided to create all of us, he has to take us into the time space because he makes us when he is in eternity. And then he puts us into a time space. But before he, he launches us into a time space, he already has planned how we are going to be, what we will be doing on earth, and all the mandate he has dished it out. And he has given everything it takes for us to be able to fulfill what he's sending us for. So no one has to suffer because we all have job descriptions. After God has completed that work, then God does what? He takes you, he puts you in on the pulpit. And that pulpit, what do we call it? Is the beginning of time. And the beginning of time starts in the womb. And when you get into the womb, that's when God begins to fulfill, to do what he wanted to do. Then God gets busy. He creates you in the womb. Amen, Bazalwan. Now, having sex does not make babies. Amen. That is why you can have sex without protection, without contraceptives, and still not have a baby. So don't stress when you don't have a baby. It's not in your hands. You are not even cursed. Amen. Don't go and pick up teachings that we don't give here. And think when we don't have babies, you are cursed. You are not cursed. It is God who determines. Did you know that God says here, he made us for himself. So children were not born for me. Born if my Bukhaluna had not stress. If kids on the not on stress. If good is on the not on stress. How stress in? Naked to a little way to Mosebet's work. Or after Moki will go mudim. Because we are going Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ere mudim has prepared the work that I will be doing in advance. 
So when God takes Mabutali, puts Mabutali into time, I'm going to put my baby. Ne, I to step on my peace and my joy with you. Because I wanted to enjoy you without Mabutali Kitu and Kutwisisu. Buhulu, Abongwe, and the other one. Uh, Abongwe, Limang. Mohaw, I'm in Barcelona. No, I only wanted you. But God also wanted the six of them. And he planned how they will become me. Can somebody say amen? Oh, somebody may say, oh, oh, one of your children got the child out of wedlock and all the mess that could be with all of them. Let me tell you, Morna Jesu, Mary became pregnant before marriage. That is why That is why Joseph Wanted to let go of Mary Because according to Joseph He thought that Mary cheated on him On her, sorry oh, On him, right He thought that Mary cheated on him Can I see the hands of women Who believed that their husband One day, one way or the other Have cheated on them Can I see their hands Mama Skatsabakul Pagamis Amen Bazalwan because people cheat. Don't sit here and think people don't cheat. That the Mozilla, you'll be surprised that Mosaduaha who cheated. Mosaduaha who see must not, must not, must not think the unthinkable and think how cheat. Oh, she will all holy, but you can't impress me. But to cheat, amen. Oh, I know I already did two to ten mark. Amen, Bazalwan. So Joseph thought Mary cheated. Then your lawyer had to come and say, No, man, Mary had cheated. She's still a virgin. Amen, Bazalwan. So when a child is born, remember, uh, when a child is born, let me tell you, when a child is born, he's born because, or she's born because, they have an assignment from God. They're not living to impress me. They will never disappoint me. They are a bunch of species that just, distress, that just, that just can stress me. They are not in my program. They are in God's program. I'm not in mama's program. I am in God's program. And she's not going to stress me with how she conduct herself. Somebody say, I told him from this. Amen, Bazalwan. Amen. So God comes in. He put the child where? He put the child in the womb because the womb is the beginning. The beginning. Amen, Bazalwan. The womb is the beginning. And then he takes the child out of the womb into the life. And then But who depend on the time allocated for you. That is why, Mr. S. That is why that the Muzila. That is why that the law. That is why that the trove. There's no devil who will take my life. There's no vaccine or COVID-19 that will take my life. Because I was not born being the predetermination of anything on this planet Earth. It is God who knew me when I, he was in eternity and planned my life. And no devil is going to rob me of that life. I'm not living in fear. Because there is no sickness that has the ability to touch my life. I'm not going to be a pastor that panics. That say I might die tomorrow. I'll be here next week. I say I'll be here next week. Or can I be the Satan or Mizan? I'll be here next week. It's not the vaccine that I might have taken that is going to make me survive throughout the week. Whether I've taken it or not, next week I'll be here. Amen. Baba Mbabut, ki vaccinate or ki sa vaccinate. Heaven, who determines your life? Who determines your life? Ko vaccinate, lo sa vaccinate. 
It's your choice based on the information you have. So I'm not going to vaccinate or I'm not going to stay against vaccination and come here and say to you, don't vaccinate. I'm not going to vaccinate and come to you and say, vaccinate. Vaccinating is like voting. Amen. Voting is a personal affair. I'm not going to give you the scriptures and tell you triple six. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let leave it to you and your connection with God to tell you what you should be doing. Maybe when you are the one who must vaccinate and you are following your brother who is not vaccinating and your brother survives because God is guiding your brother in whichever way and you are short second in your life. You must know God. Here, yeah, everybody must know God. Nobody must phone me. Daddy, could I auto vaccinate? So, I have my own assignment. I have my own assignment. I've got my own God who must guide me and lead me. I'm not going to listen to the influential pastors who will stand up and say vaccinate. I'm not going to listen to influential pastors who say do not vaccinate. And I'm caught, I'm torn between the cross road to now. I'm going to go to my knees, connect with my God and go and vaccinate. I'm going to go to my knees, connect with my God and not go for vaccination. Why? It's a choice that is not going to make you point a finger at God. It's a choice that is not going to make a, a, me point a finger to the president, the expert. It's a choice that I will bear the consequences. Somebody say amen. Hey, we've got a subject here from the, from the, from the home to the tomb. I have a talk of fail. Amen, Basalwan. We've got a talk of fail. Because But this is very crucial because we have lost our God. We have lost our connection with God. So much that it's human with human intellect that guides our next step. That is why some of you are afraid to come to church because you are guided by the voice of the expert and the scientist and your government and your state has become a divine voice because you can't hear God anymore. You have lost connection with God. And I pray that in Manhoreb, everybody will hear God's voice. Everybody will know, unless God protects you, any other thing will not save you. I say any other thing will not save you. But all other things will contribute to your salvation because you are with God. Amen, Bazalwan. Amen. I don't know if I make sense. Because Barcelona, Caracal Polos is not a religious place where the pastor come in and read the scriptures and go through the ritual and we're sitting there and we are there because we want the pastor to bury us, to baptize our children, to dedicate whatever. This is it. This is not it. Yeah, you must have a relationship with God. So that when you come here, I, I contribute to what you already have taken. So that God guides you through a shepherd. Amen, Bazalwan. So and then, then you go through, then you go through the tunnel. The tunnel is the time we are spending on earth. Amen, Bazalwan. When you get out of the tunnel, you are back to eternity. Now, when, when you get out of the tunnel and you are back to eternity, now eternity will have two routes that you will take. You will either go to hell, lake of fire, or you are going to spend eternity with God. That is determined by how you lived your life between the tunnel. Because whether you like it or not, you have to go out of the tunnel. When we get into that Huguenot tunnel, there's always cars behind us. Born, you are not going to leave when you're supposed to be dead for somebody to take over what you are doing. Hey, Mr. S. Lanka Basta, when Karaket, I could follow him up, Amen. 
You might take on, you might take on the many people, Mr. Nawak, you might take on from what I'm doing. Because when you get into this tunnel of time, it pushes you, it pushes you, it pushes you. Even if you don't want to be old, you'll become old and you will die. Because you must move. That is why politics and politicians, young politicians, are getting frustrated with the old politicians. Why? Because young people who are in the church, how many of you are saying, because suit. So out. brothers. All of my brothers are dead. I'm left with only three sisters. Amen, Bazalwan. Tanele a push, Lana Satoroto, Batwa. What's my baby Liri? A religion at Tona Lignon, Elogi, what you must say, Sibeleta. Arnton Sanka la Caronel, Olo, Swa, Otora Telete, a bit Jiwakibo, I blew it. Was I saving the cell phone to Tamudim? Oh, no sacrifice it the rest of your life. Oh, Pelago Mukuku, how to go fall, oh, Bosia Million, Banabaha, by Pompa, by Pompa, by Vitis, by Blow. We Timila Mudimu, we Timila Yono and Akabuen, how soccer opera my aeroplane, on so safe a chalet, or what to go fall so each. Kunzi. Hey, kebala the last scripture, and the last week we got kebala so next scripture she na in nasabufel. Jeremiah chapter twenty seventeen to eighteen. It means your devotions will go through the same scriptures, because he did not kill me from the womb. But Zalwan, that's powerful. Kur Jeremiah, because I want to lie, I kill my womb. Because he did not kill me from the womb, that my mother might be might have been my grave. And her womb always and her womb always enlarged with me. And when I was in the womb, I kept on growing, and I was nervous about being born. And I keep on saying, "Why can't I go to eternity? Can I go to eternity? I don't want to get into time." And I kept on growing. I kept on growing, I kept on growing. I kept on growing. up until God did what sent me to the planet Earth. Why did I come forth? from the womb to see labor and sorrow that my day should be consumed with shame jeremiah here was questioning god's purpose for his prophetic ministry because he says i came out of the womb i prophesied but people are not transforming so why did i get out of the womb and when i prophesy people are not repenting i'm preaching are you repenting are you turning around? Are you changing your attitude? We preach and people don't change. And when we go before God, we are saying to God, we are preaching, but it seems the word has no effect. People don't want to respond to the word. Why then did you send me? This was the frustration of, of Jeremiah the prophet. He said, I'm prophesying and people are not turning around. So then, why did you take me out of the womb? Why didn't you kill me when I was still in the womb? In the first place, why did you put me in the womb? You may not understand me. Up until you have never worked and you are looking for a job and you are qualified, you went to school and you can't get a job and you are asking yourself why, why, why? Stop asking your, yourself why, why, why? God is in charge. I'm in Bazaar. He knows why he brought you here. He has fashioned the, 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 the journey you must take. Jeremiah expected his prophecies to be transformative and he was really getting frustrated. Next week, I want us to go straight to Paul and check how Paul responded to the call and learn from how Paul responded to the call and begin to look at our time and look at the time that we are spending from being 
placed into the womb, into the time, and walking within the time frame, and as being ushered out of the time frame into the tomb. And of course, from the tomb, we know that we will ascend and meet with God, and there will come judgment, because the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says, it is appointed for a man to live once, and thereafter is judgment. It means, as you pursue, God has a book. He's writing all the good things you are doing. And you will be judged according to those works. Amen, Bazalwan. He, he, he writes everything. When you come before God and he plays judgment, he will be having all the proofs about you. Amen, Bazalwan. That is why repentance is a good move. Let's give the Lord a wonderful hand of praise and give other people an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of our lives. And next week, I'm not going to read all the scriptures. You know, similar straight to Paul. And from there, I'm going to engage in something that is going to help us know that when we are here on earth, what is it that we are expected to do and why we are doing it? So that when the time for us allows us to get into the tomb from the womb, having lived through the tunnel with the framework of time when we get out of it then we go the other side and the lord will look at us and say well done my faithful servant amen bazalwan i want to make an altar call and i want to give some people an opportunity to uh, make right with god we're not going to call anybody to come up front and pray with people but it is a decision that you have to make from your heart you must decide whether you follow God or you follow church. Because most people must say, For sure you are aware that by, by God's guidance, we need to know those who are part of us. And, and I believe God will guide us in helping us know who is it. So that we can eliminate those who don't, we don't have to stress ourselves with. Those who God has not sent to labor together with us. So that when the time of judgment came, we will say, Lord, all those that you brought to me, here are they. We labor together. This is what we have done. Some of us were given the brain to do administration. Some of us were doing some of the things in church. But we all work together for your work. So we are getting into that era where we want to know who is part of us and who is not part of us. Why? Because salvation is an individual thing. You are not married. You are not married in salvation and the people in community of property. That is why when you say we do it as family, you are going to fall as family. And salvation is an individual thing. What mama does with her life and her money is her responsibility. Amen, Bazalwan. How she loves God and express services to God. And if it's about to take care of you, how do you by nature, how do Amen, So mama haka keja bo pelo baka ga ba simoya ka bo pelo baka o tlawa Because ke nna ke lo account on for bo pelo baka so polo so how you invite them outside wa go baby let's get born again how you invite them na wa go sweetie let's get born again no you get born again whether i know police or how police ke tsa gagwe we na we tsa o fashion na tsela ya gagwe e thina men basalwana and then mudimu then o tsa ma a sebetsa mmogo le wena to deal with all the challenges that i want to you to know next week how to deal with them if i were you i will not miss next week because you must know, for now that you are out of the womb, you are living and you are marching towards the death, the tomb, how you should practice that. Therefore, I want to give people an opportunity so that the day you die, you die having a relationship with your maker. It is God who made you. It is not your mother. It is not your father. It is God who made you. There is why you who there are people who engage in what we call conjugal rights, who, who, who engage in, in what I call uh, the S-word. Even if you engage in a engaging the S-word, some people divorce because Baram said, Amen, Bazalwan. 
relationship is based on sex. Relationship is not based in sex. It's based in a relationship that must encourage one another to fulfill the work that God has given to you. That is why you need Jesus so that he can enlighten why he brought you together with the person you are married to. It's in Amen Basalwan. If you are there and you know you need Jesus in your life, I want to make a special prayer. One day we will be standing before God for judgment. I want you to stand before judgment, uh, before the judgment throne with confidence. Not because of your works, but because of his grace. May we stand on our feet. If there is anybody in our midst, that says mfundis murut ka se go batla mogala morena Jesu ha re etsa thapelo re tlo yetsa lo wena mo platform mo ha re etsa thapelo tlo re yetsa thapelo e e su repeat it ke thapelo that introduces you to Christ you will be beginning a life with God i'm not going to call you by name you will make the prayer and believe that this prayer is a prayer that introduces you to jesus keep tapelo at least some pulu so who it has no amen what's the world so pulu sit or so long on a mood team we are not talking about the bible look at a mocker again now i can not teach and lean to a kakili teacher and i'm in basal one can you humbly repeat this prayer after me? Kitapela homochela mochela morena Jesus, and then anyone amongst us over to homochela morena Jesus, as we make this prayer, kione erutusa hora mochela morena Jesus, lo eno ko platformo. Can we close our eyes? May we say this prayer? Say, dear Father, thank you for the word. I heard the word, and I know I need to make right with you. From now on, I repent from all my ways and from unbelief. And I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. From today, I confess all of my sins, the sins of unbelief. And from today, I'm born again. I am your child. I'm a new creation. Old things are passed away. From now on, I see new things in my life. Thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus Christ. Because the blood has washed me and cleansed me from now on i have your righteousness your holiness in jesus name thank you very much give me the hunger and the thirst and the deep desire to read the bible to come to church and to meet with god fearing christians in jesus name Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a wonderful hand of praise because we believe somebody has accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Now I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to declare blessings upon you. I want to pray against any form of sickness, any form of stress, anything that the devil wants to use as a tool to destroy your life, to destroy your family, to destroy your children, to destroy everything that is yours, including, the, including your jobs, amen, Bazalwan, including your business, amen, Bazalwan. Because you are in business, because God called you for business. You are in your profession, because God has called you for that. But Satan wants to deprive you everything that is yours. He wants you not to study as a student, and we want to break his neck. Can you close our eyes? Let me make the prayer or declaration. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you humbly. Lord God, the Bible says I must approach your throne. Lord God, without any, any timid in my, in my heart, without even condemnation, in time of need, 
Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for all of us who are here and the ones that are on the platform and those who are going to have access to this material. That, Lord God, anything that is a hindrance, anything, Lord God, that wants to destroy what you have given to them. For the married, Lord God, I pray that you will rescue, you will protect them, you will nourish them in their relationship. For the young people who are still growing, I pray that you will guide them and lead them to people who are going to add value in their lives. Father, for those who are still studying, I pray that they end education and deceive them because of no knowledge. Be wise as you live your life as you know. We put the mask, we do whatever. But what protects a person is your trust in God in Jesus' name. We are going to do our profession. And from there, the church will be over. May I encourage you to come regularly. May I encourage you to speak to some of your friends who are dying and revive them and bring them back to church. Let us not allow the state to determine the growth of our church. Let us go on a mandate. Let us go on a commission. Let us go on a mission of bringing back the Christian back into the sheepfold. Amen, Bazalwan. I'm Sotornayeri, Mazubuelen Ekaya. Wahupla Assemblies of God, the people in Baby Zain. Nebabi is a beg to God. Amen, Bazalwan. Let us take the vision Assemblies of God and say, Back to God and bring people back to church. Give the Lord on the platform and hear the church. Give the Lord a wonderful hand of praise and shout your praises and say, Amen. How wanna keep up with the body and keep at our rate of profession around the whole world? I wish they could be able to throw this thing even on those things on the side for those who are here for the first time. I'm going to count one, two, three, and from there we read that or you mumble, fella, lost it, or ring. Our faith, our glory, have the bar. Get excited, go home, enjoy yourself, enjoy your family. Don't be stingy, help the poor, help the struggling, participate in the finances of the church, and may God assist you in the process in Jesus' name. One, two, three. I found first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things are added to me i believe in jesus christ and signs and wonders are following me surely goodness and mercy are following me all the days of my life and i dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever Amen, Bazalwan. Remain a victor. May I see you again next week. Get involved in the program of the church. Back to God. Back to church. In Jesus' name. I love you and I know you love me too. Amen. Amen. <laughs>